Everyone, welcome. We are here to talk about the scary, like, I mean, it's going to be circa, circa Halloween when this comes out, so we're going to talk about the scariest topic there is in property management, and that is dressing up as a tenant. Emergency maintenance. <laughs> I don't know. I try to go with something to work. <laughs> Anyways, emergency maintenance. I think this is the thing that most people dread about uh, property management, investing in real estate. Uh, you always hear about people not wanting to fix other people's toilets at 2 in the morning. And it is a legitimate thing to I, be concerned about. I don't about. want to fix somebody's toilet. No, at I've two been in the at people's houses at 1 in the morning, and it's no fun to have to <laughs> deal with not. that. It's not something anybody wants, it's a real thing. And. Uh, yeah, I think it, it keeps people from getting into the game a little bit. But it is something you can deal with. It is definitely something you can deal deal with. And so we're going to go through, basically there are four major scenarios that we talked about really in our previous video on maintenance in general, link in the description, that we're going to go through what we would do, what we do do and have done, and what we would recommend doing if you have a third-party manager, if you are managing all the units and doing the maintenance yourself, if you're hiring contractors or a maintenance company to do it, or whether you build your own property management company and have employees. And so let's start with hiring a third party manager. So the thing you need to do first of all is know, be on the same page with them about what an emergency is, when they're gonna go out, how much you're gonna be billed for, is it extra? And also like how much they're allowed to spend but without calling you. I mean, yeah. are they able to put in a new furnace and spend $2,500 or whatever without ever calling you about no. it? Or are they allowed to fix all the plumbing? The answer but... to that question is no, by the way. <laughs> but I mean, like, you got to get this stuff you should, together. What you is should have the a, limit? probably a $500 or $1,000 limit. One of those two, depending 300 on. is also a common yeah. number, I guess. Uh, I, I would probably recommend three or 500 is yeah. probably. 300 is fine, too. Of They need to call you if it goes over that. And there's serious, you know, you need to give them some lip and actually ask for a discount if they don't. Or if it's a really big financial thing for you, I think it's fair to ask that they call you no matter what happens after hours, especially if they're going to charge you extra money after hours if you want to micromanage your properties to that level. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's kind of something you just need to know when they're going to call you and when they're not because you don't want to wake up in the morning and know that a bunch of money's been spent when you never even yes. had a, a realization of what's going on. And I, this is something you really need to, when you're interviewing property management companies, you want to ask like, what is your emergency maintenance procedure? If they don't have one or if it's very vague and kind of, that's a red flag, you know, go on to the next one. But you definitely want to ask them, what is your emergency maintenance procedure? How much are you, can you spend before you contact us? How often us? do you get emergency like, calls is a great do question. Do you say them. no if it's not really an emergency? Or, or you know, those are things, because you're going to get some of those where people are trying to get, uh, we're going to get into that here, but I think you do want to ask them what's up, what's what their procedures is and make sure you're on the same page with them. On that yeah, and so another thing is like when you are doing it yourself, it takes on a very different dynamic mm -hmm. because you're the one on call. So what you need to do is figure out what is your plan if it's something you can't physically do yourself, you don't want to do yourself, you're on vacation or something. Because mm -hmm. the reality is emergency maintenance exists. You yes. have to have a plan before it happens. And you can't do everything. And so you need to have those vendors lined up. But another question you should ask property management companies, like, you know, first of all, give me reports, like, you know, if there were emergency maintenance issues. And also, like, do you have these vendors lined up? But you need those vendors because you can't do everything if you're doing it yourself. Correct. And also, when it comes to after hours stuff, make sure your vendors are available after hours, yes. what they charge after hours. Also, it's great to have a backup in this situation or maybe just a more national yeah. branded person to call because a lot of, you know, small time vendors, they're either going to be maybe if it, everybody's HVAC goes out at the same time because it's really cold. Yeah. Everybody's uh -huh. sewer goes out at this, our sewer lines go at the same time because it's a lot of times weather related issues that are going on. So it's hard to find that person because they're usually somewhere else. So having backups is a great thing to have as well. I think also it's critical whenever you are, man like when you are managing yourself, the resident needs to have the correct expectations. They can't yes. think that you're going to fix, you know, as we stated in the one, you're not going to build them a new house. You're also, and you're certainly not going to build them a new house at 2 a.m. in the morning. And so what is an emergency and what is not an emergency? This needs, and it's usually this, water shooting out of something. Yes. I mean, what would you lay out as like the general emergencies like that 90% of the time are, are the things you need? Would Running water, mm -hmm. no toilet, and to some degree, heating and cooling. Uh, and there's one big exception I think I, I, I'd yeah. like to talk about is there's two different kinds of emergencies. There's after hours emergencies and then there's weekend emergencies mm -hmm. is another thing. So someone's, you know, it's a Friday afternoon or something and their hot water heater goes out. Some people might say, well, fix it on Monday. That's a long time to go without hot water. If it's two in the morning and a hot water heater goes out, 
it can be fixed yeah. in the morning. So, you know, uh, those are kind of two different distinctions. I mean, both between... times. You don't need to do it on Saturday night. You can do it on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. But what I mean is, you know, it's hard to go from Friday afternoon all the way to yeah. Monday morning to wait for that. But so if it's not water shooting out somewhere or maybe a leak where you're not going to be able to fix the roof but you might be able to get a situation where there's not water pouring all over the house uh, or a toilet missing or something like that or a sewage backup that's another big one then the other only other ones are fire which they need to call the fire department or some sort of theft or breaking in an entry which not they having to call the police a front door yeah. that's not working a front door is not working is another one yeah but if they have an issue where it's like the heat is out and it's you know it's 95 degrees out you have to wait till tomorrow it's, uh, well, the big thing with heating and cooling is, tr I would say, attempt to get as much of that fixed in a reasonable manner as possible. But again, if it's 3 a.m. and you know something yeah. goes out, you're going to get there in four hours. Anyways. I really like the mindset you say, like, a homeowner, you, they should not be able to expect more. They should be able to expect good service, but yes. not more than a homeowner. Yeah, so if a homeowner can't call a random HVAC service and get someone out at that time, they mm -hmm. can't really expect you to be able to do any more than that. And that's the expectation you have to set when you sign the lease mm -hmm. and make sure i have a story about this actually i had somebody who uh, called me up because they said the dishwasher was spraying water all over the place and it was mm -hmm. causing leaks and so i went over there and the dishwasher just didn't work there was some water sitting in the bottom of it they just wanted a functioning dishwasher at 1 a.m and it's like this is not an emergency so you got to yeah. make sure it's clear when something is an emergency, when it's not. If you can get there and in a couple hours, grow it's a fine. thick skin and be able to say no, or I can't get there. Tomorrow. And if there's no HVAC people in the city and there's two feet yeah. of snow on the ground or ten good. feet of snow, you can't get someone out there. Anyways, you can try your best, but you can't do more. You can't make up a new HVAC person. Yes, and I, so I mean, again, returning to the point, like you can't do it all yourself. You need to have the contacts, particularly for sewage and and basically plumbers. And the nice part is, in virtually every town, there's a rotor rooter or stinking rooter. And they can fix plumbing issues and most and most or and sewage backup issues. The problem is they're not cheap. It's nice to have them. They're your emergency option. So and, and that is, I think, a big load off a lot of people's shoulders. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. There's always those snake and rooter and rotor rooter. But it's better to find somebody else if you can because they're expensive. But yeah. they're there. there I have one tip for you. Try to prevent as many potential emergency yeah. work orders as you can. The one that landlords typically don't think to prevent is lockouts. People always call about getting locked out of their property. You can't tell them, go call a locksmith. People aren't going to want to do that. They're going to call you at 2 in the morning to get in the property. The way to prevent this is to have a deadbolt on their property, but don't let them lock the handle. Make it so the, the handles are you dummy a, handles. A, yeah, a pass-through handle like you would in yes. a, like between the kitchen and the living room or yes. something like that. Because then you can't lock that and then close the door and lock yourself out. The only lockouts you have when people lost their key or their key broke, oh, which so is much more uncommon. If you have a patio door or sliding yes, door. But something. generally, that's very, and even that's hard to do. Yeah, yes. some don't do that. But yes, uh, that's a very good tip. I rarely ever see that, but it's great. It's, it happens to other people all the time yeah. that I hear, but it doesn't happen to us because we don't do pass We haven't locks. had that ever, really. Yeah. I mean, I think the first year when we didn't do it. But yeah, that's a key. Use a dummy handle. Now, if you're going to hire a maintenance company or contractors to do it, it's very similar if you're doing the maintenance yourself because you still need to make sure somebody is going to do it somebody's going to take care of this yeah. now so the key question there are some national maintenance companies that for people who manage themselves so they can have somebody do the maintenance as well you need to ask them whether they do emergency calls how much they charge you just you're vetting them the same way that you would a property management company and if they don't you need to have those backup contractors in place if you're using a contractor obviously you need to have those contractors and again snake and rooter rotor rooter are there but Preferably use somebody. Uh, That's just somebody a little more wide range. More, more, yeah, yeah, more wide range, a little less expensive. Now we move into what we're doing is building a property management company, and that is having employees on staff. And so we've gone over maintenance in general. We'll do another video on hiring. Here we're just going to talk about the system of having a uh, emergency maintenance system in place. Yeah, and the, the biggest thing is who's going to take the phone call and having people on call and don't burn people out on it, too. Yes. Uh, so we have an on-call system, basically. Uh, we have people answer the calls. The people are trained on exactly what they're supposed to be responding to, what they're not supposed to. It's the same across the board with all of our, our team members. And basically, the people who do maintenance, part of their job for us is to do those emergency maintenance calls. They all know that. They all accept that part of it. And they have to do it about setting one week expectations a month. is important mm -hmm. too because you need to tell like when you're interviewing. We're not going to go over the interview process. We'll do that in another video. But when you're interviewing, you need to tell a maintenance technician we expect you to be on call for this amount of time. Like we have 
four maintenance techs right now, so it's basically one a week. Now, if you mm -hmm. have one, if you only have one, then they got to be on call the whole time, or maybe you or give you them a give week them a break off by and having call your a vendors, contractor. Yeah. Now, in that case, you probably don't have as many properties. Well, and also, as many calls, not all but, your yeah. maintenance professionals can do everything. Yeah. So some of our maintenance professionals aren't great at HVAC. So either we have to have another maintenance tech on backup call for that situation, or we give them the authority to get a contractor. Yeah, involved a in that vendor. Yeah, yeah, that you have set up um, uh, beforehand, and so you, you, I mean, but you do want to switch it off. You want to give them a break whenever possible. Even if you only have one, you're right. Yeah, you should have some time where they. they it goes to you when you call a contractor. I've been on 24-7. You've been on 24-7. You, there's, there's a mental thing about being on call where you never quite can completely relax. So you do want to switch it up. But, yeah, you uh, most any any hardline phone system uh, will, that you get set up can can be redirected to an emergency call at a certain hour or have that, that prompt and you... Uh, and go to the emergency line, which can go to somebody's cell phone. You don't want them to. You don't want to give out your cell phone or somebody else's cell phone. You want it to go through uh, an office line or maybe a Google Voice. A Google number. Voice number would be a yeah. great one, and that way they can leave a message, and you just listen to the message to see if it's worth. You dealing don't want to give residents your your cell phone or other people's cell phone. They'll just call yeah. directly. Because that's how we we have it set up: is where residents leave a voicemail after hours, and if it's an emergency, they'll leave an emergency voicemail that gets paged to us and. Our techs can listen to it, and we get people calling about places they want to see at two in the morning, yeah. and that's just not something our, our maintenance technician needs to wake up and listen to. But they can mm -hmm. see, okay, this is an emergency. I'm just going to let it go. I don't need to call them. Yeah, back. and then I mean, you you want to go through your general maintenance process. It's very important if you haven't seen our other video to take pictures before and after of all yeah. the, of the work being done. That's on all things, even if you're doing it yourself. Uh, you want to make sure that you have proof that it was done. You want to follow up with the resident, make sure they were happy with the job that was completed. Uh, with just with regards to payment, we you know we pay mileage for our maintenance techs. We don't pay them mileage to drive to work, but when they go out to a, a emergency call, we yeah. pay mileage. And both that's ways. that's that's automatic so, overtime. Even if yeah. they only work thirty hours that week, we'll pay overtime. Yeah, we do pay hours. automatic overtime. Those are just some ideas if, with regards to hiring employees. Yeah. But the key thing is, I think emergency maintenance happens. Prepare yourself for it. Yes. It's not the end of the world. It's scary. But it's just something that you know is going to happen. You just got to build it into your plan. As you build systems, as you grow and get bigger and, and, and more developed, you just refine them more. But it's just like if you're prepared for it, you know it's going to happen. If you know something's going to happen, it's less scary. Than it happens. If you have the plan, the stress is yeah. not gone but relieved. And honestly, missing out on the opportunity of investment real estate because of that fear is the biggest problem of all. But there's one emergency we have not talked about yet. Well, please tell me, good sir. It is an emergency to hit the big red button, not this one, but the one on your screen that says subscribe. It is an emergency that yeah, you hit that button. And also press the share button and then share on all the platforms, particularly uh, Friendster. And Definitely Nap Friendster. Napster, maybe. Share on Napster. Yeah, turn Definitely it into Napster. an MP3 and share and on Napster. Share on Napster. <laughs> press the <laughs> thumbs up button that looks like this. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks, guys.